Ewan Templeton's coastal Southland farm was one location of a number of field trials on farms carried out during 2012 and 13. They were designed to identify and compare the effects of docking lambs tails at different lengths as well as leaving them intact. The trial looked at the effects of docking or not on animal health, management and welfare as well as on processing and marketing. The research was carried out on four farms in Southland, Canterbury and Wairarapa. The work was done in conjunction with Alliance Group, UK supermarket group Sainsbury's, Beef and Lamb New Zealand and MPI's Sustainable Farming Fund. There was limited data out there about tail length in New Zealand. Our Alliance Group decided to do some trials on behalf of our customers to get scientific data to back up New Zealand tail docking strategies. This trial was to look at terminal sire lambs that were finished within the season. Uh, there's no look at the maternal ewe as far as tail length and surrounding, for example, bearings and the likes. We've got the textual cooper with and we've been in that for quite a long time, 15 years or more. We just use some terminals as well and we're experimenting with the texture breed which is a composite with a quarter east Frisian in it. We were wondering about the check at tailing and then uh, we heard about another farmer who was leaving a lot of his, all his singles untouched, not even docking them, went and had a look at that and then decided about six years ago to make a start on that ourselves. We were actually leaving more and more lambs untouched. We decided not to crypt talk it any further. We left the ram lambs entire. Then we went to the point of not even tailing any ram lambs at all on the property. And we even then, for two years, we also left the terminal ewe lambs untouched as well. So only docking and maternal ewe lambs. It was interesting to be part of the trial and find that that was one of the concerns that they were looking to cover by having the four different lengths to see if there was any animal welfare issues with docking and to find then that in the trial, okay, there's no growth benefit but nor is there any harm. There's no long-term harm to the lamb, so that was good news as far as the uh, market's concerned. Fly strike is very rarely an issue here. The wind is too much for the flies and our summers are cooler. They wanted a farmer who was already doing something with long tails to, to be part of the trial and we were happy to help the company out in that regard. And okay, it was a bit of extra work at, tail, at uh, lambing time, putting all those tags on the lamb's ears, but uh, it was a new challenge for us. And I've got a couple of good staff to help out with that job. We were approached from Alliance because they had a number of shareholders that were starting to leave tails intact on lambs that were destined for early slaughter and they were doing that because they thought that there was a perceived growth check associated with docking and so Alliance was interested to understand if that was true or not. So they approached us to undertake a trial here at Ewan Linders and um, to look at the effect of docking and if that has an impact on lamb growth rates and meat yield. So we came out here and talked to um, Ewan Linda and his team and, um, and what we did is we decided that we would look at three different treatments. Um, so we decided to look at a short tail which is um, cut at the caudal folds which is about kind of two to three centimetres from the base. We also looked at a long treatment which is kind of cut distal to the caudal folds and that's about five to seven centimetres from the base. And the other treatment was to look at intact tails, so just to leave them alone. So what Ewan and his team did is they, they tagged twin born lambs at birth and then we applied those docking treatments in the tailing pen. So one twin would get one treatment, so for example it might get a short treatment and the other twin would get another treatment, so maybe just leaving the tail intact. We measured live weights at docking and at weaning and then at every post wean draft and when the lambs were ready to go for slaughter, uh, the same twin born lambs were sent uh, to Alliance's lawn bull plant and we measured carcass weight and meat yield biosquan measurements on those lambs. So the main results were that uh, we didn't see any long-term uh, beneficial or detrimental effects on um, lamb growth rates from docking to slaughter. What that means for farmers is, is that they're not really missing out on any large production opportunities from docking their lambs. So there are a lot of factors that affect lamb growth rates in terms of how lambs can be performing in different systems. So one factor that we didn't look at is if we left the lambs completely alone because all the lambs went through the docking pen, 
So that is one factor that we haven't looked at. Um, but if all the lambs came through the docking pen, then we didn't see an effect on lamb growth rates. So there are many different drivers um, for why farmers dock and uh, as part of some of the trial work we also carried out a survey and um, but the, uh, identified the three main reasons were to um, reduce stags and the likelihood of um, fly strike um, but there are some farmers out there that are leaving lamb tails intact because they believe that it reduces uterine prolapses, um, so bearing. So when we um, look at the DAG scores and we're looking at the different treatments between short, long and intact, um, we found... So we carried out two lots of trials. So here at Ewan and Linda's, with the trials we're focusing mainly on um, the effects of tail length on lamb growth and meat yield. And we carried out three other field trials. So one in the foothills of Canterbury and another two in Masterton, Lower North Island. On those trials, we mainly focused on measuring DAG scores and crutching times and um, the risk of fly strike. What the results showed was that um, as if we left intact tails, then they are more likely to accumulate a greater amount of DAGs, uh, which farmers know. So, um, and because of that, then that means that there are greater risk uh, for fly strike. We made sure that we recorded crutching times to have a look and the relationship that we found there, which is kind of common knowledge, is, is that as the tail length gets longer or left intact, then the crutching times increase and obviously as if the lambs are also daggier, then the crutching time also increases there and then that would mean that there would be a, a greater cost associated with that. From a scientific point of view, tail length has no effect on um, growth rates, so from a production point of view there, was, um, there is no effect. Um, and the reality is it's really up to the farmer's choice if they uh, want to dock or not dock. And if they do choose to dock, then they just follow, um, uh, follow the rules according to the Code of Welfare. <coughs> This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.